On May 20th, the island of Cuba became a republic after 30 years of struggle. That is why this day for Cubans is a day of patriotism and celebration. This afternoon, in this beautiful library, we will celebrate together the 111th anniversary of the independence of Cuba. Our presentation will be a combination of history and art. Prepare with this great love and affection for you and for Cuba. On October 10, 1868, in the sugar mill La de Mahagua, a group of patriots under the leadership of Carlos Manuel de Céspedes y Castillo, a Cuban landowner, rose up in arms against the Spanish colonial government, calling for the complete independence of the island of Cuba. Several days later, the historic city of Bayamo in eastern Cuba was taken by the rebel forces. There at Bayamo, the first government of the Republican arms was established. The Spanish colonial government reacted by sending to Bayamo enough troops to quell the rebellion and regain control of the city. Powerless in the face of the large Spanish forces that were approaching Bayamo, the Cuban rebels left the city. Citizens of Bayamo, as a gesture of patriotism, burned down their city before the arrival of the Spanish army. Eighteen sixty eight was the beginning of the war that lasted ten years and ended with a covenant where Cuba continued to be a colony of Spain. Many valuable patriots, as the Mayor Ignacio Agramonte, the father of the land, Carlos Manuel de Céspedes, and others died on the battlefield, leaving a legacy of heroism in our history. After a relative peace, where there were some political concessions by the colonial government to the island, Cubans began the new war to achieve total independence on February 1895, this time led by a young Cuban intellectual, José Martí. Martí had the political capacity to bring together the leaders of the first war, 1868 through 1878, with a new generation of Cuban patriots. The young poet, José Martí, Alongside Juan Gualberto Gomez, an illustrious journalist of Havana, organized the Cuban Revolutionary Party, which had only one goal, the independence of Cuba. Unfortunately, Jose Martí 
the young leader of the new revolution fell on the battlefield in May of 1895. Only three months after the Cuban troops called Mambises, commanded by General Maximo Gomez, started the fighting on the eastern part of the island. During these three years, Cuban revolutionaries fought for its independence against an army that far exceeded in soldiers and weapons. Another sad loss for the Cuban Mambises in 1896 was the death in combat of General Antonio Maceo, second in command of the army and hero of the two wars. In 1898, the Army of the United States of America intervened in the war to aid the people of Cuba. And in the same year, Spain finally relinquished its domain of Cuba. Starting from this moment, a new and historical process which would culminate in realizing the dream of several generations of Cubans. After a brief military intervention of the American army, which ensured the departure of all Spanish troops off the island, on May 20th, 1902, the Cuban flag was hoisted for the first time in the Morro Castle in Havana Bay. The ceremony was presided by General Maximo Gomez, representing Cuba, and Mr. L. Wood, representing the United States of America. Cubans had to wait more than 30 years to see their efforts transformed into reality, and on May 20th, 1902, precisely at noontime, all the people from Havana went up to El Malecón Habanero, to witness the most important historical moment of their lives, to see the island of Cuba become a republic. Jose Martí, the apostle of the independence movement, along with others who also paid with their lives during this long struggle, were remembered by the people celebrating on the streets. Their names were present that historic day in the hearts of all citizens of the new republic. May 20th means celebration of independence for the Cuban people, but also means to pay tribute to the men and women who gave their lives to build the basis of our identity. <laughs>